the most, uh, I was disappointed when, when we didn't get made the first time uh, because I thought it was a great matchup and I like, I do like good fights and I think these styles really humbling each other and uh, I know Canelo's you know, he's a young, strong guy and uh, he starts off very quick. I feel the first four rounds are going to be a little bit rough. I think it's, it's, but I think after he fades a little bit, and I think we're going to obviously we have to hit to the body quite a bit in, in the early rounds, and I think we can take him out in the late rounds. Uh, are you familiar? Oh, I'm going back. I have spoken to many people, and they said this is a throwback to the days of this, this Tony Zale and Rocky Graziano. It bypasses anybody else. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, you have a great uh, Mexican, Puerto Rican, uh, uh, um, I wouldn't say hatred, but <laughs> I mean, they have very passionate fans and they both are going to defend their countries. And um, it's, it's a big fight. The rivalry's been going on for many, many, many years. When I was a fighter, it was a great fight between the great Mexicans and the great Puerto Rican fighters. And uh, this is just uh, kind of a throwback. And, uh, we're going to come up with the best man in six hundred in the world. One more question. Uh, what's this uh, scuttlebutt, this complaint about the catch weight, when in reality, fighters weigh in the day before, like in my time you weigh in, in your time you weigh in the day of the fight. And uh, they have enough time to replenish, re-energize themselves. Yeah. And uh, both, I believe, it's my opinion that both me and Canelo are natural 54 pounders. They could easily make 54 pounders. Um, they could both make 54, I would say, yes. But the thing is, no. uh, catch weight is kind of a loophole that someone invented and uh, came up with. And it's just a, it's now a big negotiation factor in fights. So the thing is, you're trying to get the best be a fighter, so you, uh, you know, you're trying to make, make the other guy make weight and then maybe make him a little bit weak and so forth. But with the, with the way he did the day before, I really don't think it matters that much, to be honest with you. But I am a true believer in, I think everyone should fight at the way. I, I don't like catch weight, to be honest with you. I think if they fight for the middle of the title, they should be at 160, but that's just my opinion. So, you don't think uh, it's going to be the peace of the coach at sir? Sir, okay. sir, we got to limit it to two questions per person, please. I understand, but we have to limit it to two, two questions per person. Next, please. Okay. Freddie, any disappointment in not having this fight in mess for going? Um, a little bit, yeah. I, I thought, you know, it would be a great fight for the garden, of course, but the, um, I hear the taxes too high and uh, Vegas is a lot cheaper. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Vegas, it, you know, it, it's a good fight for Vegas, Bentley Bay. It's um, not the biggest arena in Vegas, but they, they hold, I think, 11,000, and it'll definitely be a sellout. And um, the scalpers will do well. Last question. One more yeah. question. Yeah, okay. One uh, question. What do you have to do to keep your guy focused on this fight? Because the Triple G's fighting, it kind of, is he going to, you know, stop him from peeping a little in advance? What you no, mean? Triple G is something we might do in the future. Right now, our eyes are on Canelo, and we have to deal with this first. I mean, one fight at a time. Miguel is a very disciplined person, and he trains really hard for the fight. I, but, uh, we, we trained last week, and we started with the game plan a little bit already, and, um, we're not finished with it yet, but um, by the time we'll be there. Thanks, Brady. Thanks, Thank Next question. Thank you. Hey, Brady, how's it going? Yeah. Uh, I read recently that you said uh, Canelo is a little bit of a lazy fighter, or that you saw that he, uh, in, when he's training in the gym that he's a little bit lazy. What, what did you see that uh, warranted that? Well, I I own Wild Car West, which he used to work out at my gym and so forth, and he, he the reports I got with, he doesn't show up every day, and sometimes he misses a week here and a week there. But when you're young and cocky like he is, and the young guy, you can get away with that. But um, I don't think he should try that with Miguel, because we will make him pay and if he does best. And you also said that he uh, might have some stamina problems. Does that mean that you have to attack the body early, uh, kind of tire him out you know, for the later round? Uh, that's part of the strategy, yes. I mean, it's uh, um, a factor that we get. You know, he is, a, he is a quick starter and has a big right hand. 
I think we can take that away from them by getting close to them, getting working body on the inside and, and take them out in later on. So yeah, we do need to break them down though. It's um, It'll be a process, it's not an easy one, but I think it's doable. Thanks, Ray. Next question, thank you. Can you tell us about the styles of both fighters? What do you think is Miguel and Edge? What gives Canelo an edge? Well, Canelo's edge is, I think, his youth, of course, but the, uh, I mean, he's got a big right hand. He has, he does have knockout power. He's playing with the right hand. Um, Miguel's best punch is the left hook to the body or head. We brought that back quite, and he's doing quite well with that. But uh, again, both fighters are going to have to really raise the level of the game because one thing's not going to win the fight. There's no rematch clause in this fight. What not, is, not that I know. Of. Is there a possibility that you can see if the fight is entertaining or? Controversial. I think it's gonna be like fight of the year type fight because the, these styles do match up well, and a rematch is definitely something that um, could happen for sure. Thank you. Baby, we're perspective. Uh, you say this might be the equivalent going back in time to Sonny Liston versus Wade Patterson, and they're both excellent fighters, but they're not Muhammad Ali. They're a conservative. <laughs> is there a concern about that perception? Like, okay, it's B plus time, but not in the real. After what happened with Pacquiao and the yeah. other guy, I'm just curious if that's a concern. Well, are... that's going maybe a little bit too far back for me. I'm not that old. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I know. But the, the, the thing is, is, there's been some great fights between Puerto Rico and Mexico. Great fights, great audience. I think this is going to be right there with, with those great, great ones, yes. I, the matchup is really good. The styles complement each other, and uh, whoever pulls it off will win the fight. Thank you, Richard. good to see you. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, question I have: Everyone is giving uh, the chance that Cotto has when you talk to people on the block and stuff uh, for his boxing skills. Uh, he's going to give Cotto. I mean, Canelo a lot of problems with boxing skills. If the roles are reversed and Canelo comes out boxing. Instead of expect to come on punch, how will you adapt to that game? Yeah, you know, we, we, we have to get ready for that for sure. I mean, because you, you know, fighters are always trying to make uh, changes, and, and um, you know, you watch a lot of tape on fighters and so forth. It doesn't mean they're going to fight that way, of course. Everyone's trying to change and you know, throw a little bit of this or that at you. So, everyone's trying to improve at all times, as we are also. Uh, uh, I feel like Miguel should box a little bit more in this fight when he's going to be the puncher and uh, we're working on that quite a bit and the footwork is, it's come along really good. I mean, I watched a lot of tapes when he was an amateur and his footwork was great back then and now he's just, for a while there, he's just trying to look for a one punch knockout and we've gone past that and we've gone back to black boxing and uh, you know, breaking guys down and doing it the correct way, not just looking for it. Uh, chemistry has been well with both of you, obviously, on the yeah. resume. But if Canelo presses him to a point where he, he brings him to a level where he goes into the corner, do you think he'll be able to have Cotto stay composure where he's able to keep boxing instead of reverting to his old style of uh, head to head? Possibly. I mean, the thing is that if he does attack, attack us that, that strongly, we will have to suck it up and fight back and fight, maybe fight his fight. But I'm not afraid to go on the inside with Cotto because he's very good on the, in the pocket. And I, I actually like him in the pocket a little bit. To be honest with you. Oh, good luck. Thank you. Yeah, um, last fight, Canelo, uh, you had a lot of pressure on him and kind of an ropes he actually got. Are you looking for that kind of fight for him to open up? I think he's going to go toe to toe. I think um, um, his um, he, um, he 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 likes that, and again, he's a fast starter. And uh, we might we might just stay with him and keep him at bay at, at, at that point. But I, the original thought right now is to use movement and outboxing. Um, he seems to be more of a counter puncher lately. Well, he's a little bit of a counter puncher, but not really a true good counter puncher. I, I don't think, I don't think this is a game. I, I don't. Uh, I'm not worried about that so much. Well, yeah, the last fight, but I mean, the, the, uh, 